Hi, my name is Cold Bear, and let's start with Songs of Conquest and its $1,000 map making contest. Aha, I got your attention here, didn't I? So the contest spans until April 28th, and the best map creator not only will get this solid sum of money, but the map itself will join the official pool of Songs of Conquest maps forever. So basically, they are buying the map from you. Some close calls will also get prizes, although probably not as cool as $1,000, that's for sure. Well, at least let's hope that they are ingredients for potato salad. There, a 100 kilos of potatoes for you, boy. That would be amazing. You can find the link to the contest on my Facebook page, where I share all cool stuff like that, or just find it on Steam. The game itself is a beautiful clone of Heroes of Might and Magic, although made in pixel art graphic style. I think from the art style, it is a wonderful game. Although every time I want to take a closer look at some unit, I just realize that I gaze at a model of colorful squares. Game is still in early access, but if you like Heroes of Might and Magic franchise, you can't go wrong with this one. A Plague Tale Innocence. He will take control of young Amisha and her little brother Hugo in a journey through the darkest hours of history. Haunted by Inquisition soldiers and surrounded by unstoppable swarms of rats, you will struggle to survive against overwhelming odds. Dead, rotten bodies lay everywhere, and rats, oh, those creatures can and will eat anyone alive who does not carry a light source. As I always say, this is a bit unbelievable. Unbelievable. You know, rats are no vampires. I used to own one, it liked bathing in the sun rays. Well, what if those are vampire rats? Um, I never actually thought about that. Anyway, keep in mind that the atmosphere here is grim and dark, so if you are a sensitive person, it may prove a challenge to play. Game tend to pull the ropes of emotion. And if you let your guard down and allow it to do its dark job, it will control you like a puppet. But in general, all that darkness is cool and original, keeping in mind all those airy fairy unicorn games people are used to play these days. Silt. This is an atmospheric puzzle adventure and exploration game with hints of horror made by ignoring all the existing colors. I love it, colors are for the weak. Yeah, alone in underwater abyss, you are a diver searching the deep to uncover long forgotten mysteries. You are able to possess the creatures around you to solve puzzles and travel further into the darkness. Ooh. I'll be honest, Silt looks absolutely beautiful and these hand-drawn backgrounds are, you know, I can agree with what developers are saying about their game. It's an art brought to life. Yeah, that's that's for sure, people on Steam are saying that this is a simplistic and fun puzzle game with the vibes of Limbo. Mortal Shell here combat is very strategic. You must trust your weapon only when an opportunity opens. You have to calculate your moves and unleash counter blows or perish and meet your doom if you are an impatient one. You will be given some cool abilities like stone form, which can be used as a block or to add brutal weight to your own devastating attacks. Also, the RPG element is very strong here. You can get new skills, upgrade old ones, sharpen your blades with acid and, of course, find different weapons. Your path is guarded by tough adversaries devoted to creepy gods. You will meet many grotesque creatures, but do not let fear halt your journey. Muster your courage and face them down as a true sofa warrior you are. I know that this game will probably infuriate you, but the price is very nice, so you can probably afford to infuriate yourself for less than 10 euros. I would even say that this is the right price for the game. I wouldn't dare to recommend it to you for the full price, but now, you know, why not? Starbound this is basically a Terraria in space where you create your own story. There is no wrong way to play. You can go and save the universe from the forces that destroyed your home, uncovering greater galactic mysteries in the process. Or you may wish to ignore this heroic journey entirely in favor of colonizing uncharted planets, collecting rare creatures or delve into dangerous dungeons and lay claim to otherworldly treasures. Discover ancient temples and modern cities, trees with eyes, mischievous penguins and talking ding-dongs. Well, you'll be first to find those but you never know, universe is endless. Journey to the Savage Planet As the newest recruit of Kindred Aerospace, the fourth best interstellar space exploration company, your job is to find out if this planet is suitable for humans. Well, honestly, probably not. Not at all, but you don't know that yet, and yet, here you are. You can play it alone or with a friend. Of course, you probably don't have one, so alone it is. This game may look like it's made for kids, but it's not. It has references of alien drugs and some more adult themes I don't think I can talk about if I want to stay monetized, but people are saying that the game has really great humor, awesome design of animals and plants, and really fun tools to use. Although some of the players are complaining that the game gave them headaches. Like, real headaches. Probably from oversaturated colors and lots of movement, so keep that in mind if you are a bit more sensitive person. Scorn 
Well, don't get me wrong, I can't actually recommend this game because it has a lot of flaws that I don't like. Also, it takes a very specific type of person to like the game, and that person is the one who likes extremely slow-paced horror games littered with puzzles that most of the time have no clues. In other words, this game is perfect for any masochist. Scorn was advertised as a xenomorphish first-person shooter, but I played 4 hours of Scorn, and I don't think I have shot anything in that time. All I did was just walk around admiring the scenery and trying to solve puzzles. And sometimes I had no idea if a thing I had encountered was a puzzle or just a thing for aesthetic purposes. Most of the time you have no clues of why and what to do. For example, one of the first puzzles requires you to do some things to get access to a door. One of them is some generic riddle that is not fun, also difficult and annoying. That instantly ruins the fun. And you can't progress without solving it. The best thing about Scorn is its art. I think honestly it is one of the most beautiful games I have ever seen. But you already know that I like dark and grim stuff, so if you like it as well, Scorn may be interesting for you aesthetically. Just remember, it is a puzzle game and everything else is just a nice decoration. In most. This is an emotional and deeply atmospheric narrative-driven puzzle platformer. You will uncover the stories of an adventurous young girl, a stoic knight and a man in search of answers. You will explore a crumbling, nightmarish landscape, slice through enemies and spring deadly traps in order to escape the evil that awaits. You will have to lure enemies into lethal traps, solve environmental puzzles and utilize your scythe, hookshot and pickaxe to avoid a gruesome end. The story is not very long. It will take you about 3 to 5 hours to complete. Literally, depends on how dumb you are, because it's a puzzle game. It can work like an IQ test. If you finish it in 3 hours, congratulations. If in 5, well, I have bad news for you. And you finished it in 10. No, 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 that's a lie. That's a lie, everyone. No, it isn't. Shut up, sh shut up. Aquatico. A simple but challenging base builder, where you will have to raise an underwater city and prosper in the process. The world's surface has become a barren wasteland, forcing humanity to pour any remaining hope for a new beginning into depths of the sea. As developers say, upon discovering the world below the tides, the opportunity to start over is within reach. Despite the new beginning, the dangers and challenges that lie ahead won't make survival under the sea a simple task. Well, I don't know who could ever think that survival under the sea is a simple task. We will have a city on Mars sooner than we will have one under the sea on Earth. You know, absence of air and huge pressure is way harder to deal with than the absence of air and no pressure. But not here. Aquatico is a fun game for everyone who likes managing huge cities, building pipelines, electricity cables and stuff like that. For everyone else, better avoid it, it's not for you. Command and Conquer Red Alert 3 so, speaking about rocks, if somehow you were living under a rock in the bottom of the ocean far away on a distant planet in a parallel universe and avoided Red Alert 3, this is your chance to fill the gap and play one of the best RTS games ever created. Or maybe you have nostalgia and way more powerful machine than in the year of 2008 when you were playing the game for the first time. So now you can enjoy the game in full glory. Also, you can find tons of mods now that improve the gameplay in one way or another. Red Alert 3 has an awesome campaign, still good looking graphics, and tons of fun. Thank you for watching, have a nice day, and I'll see you next year, timer. Bye!